Hi, this is video number five in the five part video series on NVC. I'm B Marshall, founder of Yes Parenting, and I am joined by Scott Swain, who is an NVC trainer. In this fifth and final video, Scott is going to share with us some tips and techniques that we can use as we practice and develop um, the art of using NVC in communication. And he's also specifically going to look at apology and the unusual stance that NVC takes on apology, which is that it moves us away from the need to apologize or the requirement of an apology. So, Scott, I don't mind whether you want to start with apology or whether you want to start with some tips and techniques. I totally trust you and your expertise. Okay, I'll go ahead and start with apology and try to make it brief. So one, one thing that's really important to bring up as a prelude to that is that and it's, it's along the lines of the last video, and kind of, so it's, it's good to speak at the beginning of this one, is that a benefit of MVC is that we are training ourselves and really in a way anybody who's in listening distance <laughs> um, to this idea that while there may or may be one shared reality here uh we all have our own separate perceptions of that reality and the way that we look at it and to me for the purposes of getting along with people and understanding them it is really important to integrate this idea that everybody has their own perception mm -hmm. so if, if everybody has their own perception then you might say that to some degree, nobody can really be right or wrong. And I know that's a controversial thing, and I'm not gonna, you know, that we could talk forever about that, but I just wanna put it out there as a prelude because that leads perfectly into this idea of apology. Because, you know, and, and now I'll go more toward what Marshall says about, you know, Marshall's the author of the book, In Nonviolent Communication. Anyway, so if a child, does something, let's say, that, that is, you know, they, they accidentally spilled something and it's, you know, destructive. Then an older model might be that we want to push them to apologize, we to say, hey, I'm sorry I did that, and make some kind of like recompense or mm -hmm. whatever you might call it. NBC teaches us that that doesn't help anything. <laughs> For one thing, it sort of buys into this paradigm that, that we want to, that causing somebody pain like the apology being a sort of punitive thing, like, oh, I'm going to say I'm sorry because I was wrong. Well, actually, was there a wrong there? I would say no, there's not. There was an accident, and there was not, like, an intent to harm. And even if there was, we could argue against this apology thing. So what I'm hearing you say is that NVC recognizes that, uh, or it starts from a foundational belief or understanding that we are all sharing one reality but each of us has a unique and individual experience of that reality so what what might be my perception of what happened in a situation could be very different to your perception of what happened in the same situation even though we were both there so in a more traditional method of communication, when we come to talk about that situation, we might be each coming from this place of like, well, I'm right and you're wrong, or feeling um, that the other person did something against us somehow. Whereas when we come from this foundational understanding within NVC, we recognize that in some ways there is no right or wrong. There is different people's feelings and needs and then behaviors or strategies as we talked about before and as we go through the process of using NVC to step into that empathy that the kind of being able to understand what was going on for the other person and also being able to be clear and share about us so that they can understand then we don't need apology because that mutual community, mutual sharing and understanding means that we can actually move forward together with more of a shared understanding of our reality. Is that right? Um, yeah, thank you. You saved me there. I was kind of sort of floundering on that one. And, and yeah. yeah, 
thank you so much because yeah that's yeah, no that's it's my pleasure i i i have this ability to um amazingly because i'm a woman of many words but i do seem to have this ability to to pull lots of things down into a condensed format so i'm very happy to share that here so moving on then from this benefit of NVC almost kind of making apology redundant is, is kind of what I'm hearing. And um, how does that lead us into some tips and techniques that people can use to support their kind of NVC practice and develop it? Yeah, so uh, there's, there's a lot there. I would start out with, um, read book to me the book is pretty far superior to the audiobook i mean they have most of the same content but there's some stuff missing from the audiobook so and i know nowadays it seems like people are moving more toward audiobooks because of whatever reasons i mean it's easier for a lot of people in their car or whatever so if you can't read <laughs> um or you, you don't want to read then yeah, get the audiobook, um, and then from there, and I'm just going to give some concrete stuff at first here. Mm. The other thing would be uh, in your area, search out, you know, get on meetup.com, and you might be surprised. Search for NVC, you might find people meet weekly. Uh, I've run a couple groups now in Austin, Texas, and now here in Acapulco, where people can meet and get that real world with people practice mm -hmm. and and you know I've, I've had people not find a group in their city and lament that but i've encouraged them create your own you don't have to be an expert you don't even have to read the book maybe call it a book club and everybody reads a chapter a week so and meetup.com is almost free it's it's like really cheap it's getting really popular you can find people in your area easily let's see another concrete thing I have a website that's a uh, resource website with animations and stories and links to the author talking and doing classes. There's hundreds, there, well, not hundreds, um, lots and lots of hours of him teaching. You could watch those and learn quite a bit. Uh, on my website, clearstay.net, I also have a card game that I created that's for the very purpose of practicing empathy. It's easy to find there and you can go there. I'm working now on developing an app uh, so that it's a lot cheaper and more accessible. Mm. So um, yeah, I'm working on a phone app for that game. The game is called Play to Evolve. Let's see, okay, so tips and tricks. Um, one is to, you know, if you have a partner or friends, just practice with them. Just let them know, hey, I want to practice this kind of you know, this language. And would you be willing to just let me try it with you? And I really want to get more empathetic. Other is to practice it when you're out in public. I've, I've found some more often than not, automatically it happens. I find myself, you know, if you're talking to a waiter or a waitress and they're taking the moment to share something with you about their day or whatever. Well, right there, it might be tempting to talk about your day, but instead pause for a moment and think, well, what is this person really sharing? What's going on underneath their, you know, what they're saying there? What needs are they expressing? Mm -hmm. So it is important to get a list of needs from the, either my website or you can search NVC needs on the web and get big lists of needs. So, you know, I, I've known lots of people, um, people who have been in my classes would tell me, yeah, that they, they, they have a laminated card of needs that they carry in their wallet. So that can be a thing. Um, I'll pause there because you might have ideas that have helped you over the course um, as far as tips or tricks. Yeah, I, th I mean, I, I guess one of my uh, biggest tips would be to just take it in small steps. I'm naturally someone that when I come across something new and it's brilliant and amazing and I can see how great it is, I want to know how to do it all at once. I want to, you know, I just want to be brilliant at it and I, and I can find it frustrating to take the longer, slower path. But actually, my experience of MVC is that even just with a little bit of it, you experience so much more kind of liberation within yourself and it really starts to impact your relationships with the people around you. So, so that would be my first top tip is just take it slowly and do small bits at a time. You don't have to master it to 
experience you know the incredible benefits of it another tip a self-promotional tip would be to join my subscription group yes parenting for happy families because within there i use mvc in the way that i coach and support uh, the other mums in the group and nvc is a, a kind of a, a cornerstone of yes parenting it was you know one of the missing pieces i suppose that when it fell into place seemed to kind of create this really rounded approach to parenting that you know is changing lives around the world so that would be another another tip and my final tip would be to practice 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 the self empathy because i think often we're not even very articulate with our own feelings and our own needs and the more that we can get clear on that for ourselves the easier it becomes to kind of in, to be curious i suppose about what someone else is feeling and needing but i think that it's harder to do that for others if you can't first do it for yourself yeah those are all important there's one um you you've mentioned it throughout a couple of the videos and i'm wondering if now is a great opportunity just in these last couple of minutes of this video is you've talked about the kind of the clinical creation of the the, the, the nvc format and, and the kind of the clinical way of using it but you've also talked about the fact that as you get used to doing that you can become more colloquial i wonder whether you have any tips or techniques for how to move from that kind of clinical into the colloquial because and i know how awkward it can sometimes feel to use the clinical set up because it is so unfamiliar uh, to most of us so do you have anything that you can share to support people in that part of the process yeah great question in a, in the, the clinical we're typically doing the harder thing really in a way is and and uh, until it's integrated and that is to try to create one sentence that is the empathy nbc empathy process as like uh, I see this, I'm wondering, you know, I feel this about it, and here's my needs, and would you be willing to do this thing? Or, I see this, are you feeling this because of your needs, and are you wanting this? So either way, that's the clinical, we're combining it all at once, and, and really what I learned, and it took me a while to learn this, that, that mm, that's not going to be quite so effective. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's, it really is, but the more effective colloquial approach to me is to break it up into pieces mm. and to be really and so it's like oh wow so that thing happened to you and then just wait and let them yeah that thing happened and it was it was really scary da, 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 da. oh wow i could tell like when that thing was happening it sounds like you're pretty like afraid mm -hmm. yeah yeah i was pretty afraid because da, 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 da. oh so you was it i mean safety obviously right and they're like well no actually i was afraid that this thing would happen it would cause this person to find out this thing oh privacy yeah mm -hmm. privacy so we're breaking it up we're being really patient we're taking our time we're not in a rush we don't have an agenda and that's yet another benefit of nbc that i didn't bring up earlier that you know it's not part of this video but is we learn to let go of our agenda we learn to not put so much pressure on ourselves or others to have a certain outcome mm, that's a huge tip in and of itself is you know to give yourself permission to take your time and not to have an agenda when you know when so often in conversation you know we're not necessarily actively listening we're often listening whilst working out what we're going to say next kind of thing so giving ourselves permission to to have that space, to take our time, and to know that actually it's okay to not have an agenda seems to me to be a brilliant tip. Imagine that seeping into every part of your life, which it does. Mm. I mean, imagine with somebody in bed who doesn't have an agenda, you know, <laughs> they're flowing with you. And with your children, less of an agenda doing things. I mean, yes. uh, and, and being, uh, just hanging out with some friends and, Somebody says something and you're thinking, oh, I really want to say this. I want to, you know, then you, there's this, like, do I really need to, you know, you know I mean, and, it, and it becomes automatic, but there's this in-between that's really sweet of like, wow, you know, I didn't really need, I don't really need to say anything here. I can, I can let events unfold. 
And again, with your children, you know, the kid is doing something and you feel this desire to like control them or change them. It's like, well, wait a minute. In that situation, can I just let them do what they're doing and it's going to turn out okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. So it, it seeps into everything and it's so wonderful and freeing. Yeah. Beautiful. That to me seems like the perfect place to end this little video series. Um, so thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. And uh, I, I have learned so much. I really appreciate it. So thank you, Scott. Thank you, B.